It was actually kind of a really weird situation because um, with with my leadership role and stuff on flying, that's so why I wasn't even leadership at that time. But, you know, I work for my, my nation and our, our emails are made public. So I get a lot of like fan email, you know, people will write, send me emails or letters because they find out where I where my address is on, on online. And some lady had wrote me and said, hey, can you be a part of uh, Letter Kenny? And uh, I kind of I like I said, no disrespect to Letter Kenny, but I had no fucking clue what that was. And, uh, I was kind of, I was kind of like, I'm a fucking 39 year old man. You know, like, I'm, I'm not an actor. And so I went home that night and with my wife, we YouTubed, you know, us little guys in the reserve, we were YouTube in uh letter Kenny things. I remember the first thing I said is this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Like I'm not a comical guy. I've not, you know, and I don't watch much TV. I watch sports net and I watch you know, the news once in a while. So I was like, this is the stupidest shit I've ever seen. But I started going around a lot of my white buddies. Sorry, I'm bringing the race in here. But, you know, I find that Letter Kenny's kind of a middle-aged white man, you know, redneck show. And my all my buddies were like, you've been asked to be on Letter Kenny. I said, that's fucking awesome. I'm like, I don't even know what it is. So then <laughs> one of my buddies were at a house party. He pulls out. He has the discs of every Letter Kenny season episode there was. And I'm like, oh, okay. So it, it turned out where I ended up leaving. After I got that email, I went to the States to go visit family, you know in California. And when I'm gone, I never check my, my work email. So when I got back, they had asked me if I would do some kind of audition, you know, if I would have read into a camera and had my wife film me, say a few lines. And, uh, I had missed that deadline. So I wrote back out of respect. I said, you guys, you know, I'm sorry. I just got home from vacation. I didn't check my emails, you know, thank you for the opportunity, but I obviously was in way past the deadline. And within three minutes, she wrote back, she goes, no, Jared Kiso loves you. You're on. Can you fly in November? So, you know, the rest is history. I basically became part of the Shorzy family and we flew there for season one. And it was tough because of COVID and stuff, you know, the, all the, I'm, I don't want to get too political, but I'm kind of the anti-COVID guy. So, you know, having to get your vaccinations and wear a mask everywhere and be, tra- you know, it's kind of a, a shit show for the first season because, because of COVID and, uh, but we got her done. It was awesome. You know, I had a couple other hockey buddies on there that, you know, kind of reminded me of the hockey family. We all would go for yeah. dinner at night and, and uh, yeah, that, that's kind of how it all began. And, and now we're, we're regulars on Shorzy and we're the three, the, the three gyms. So I'm enjoying it. Well, I mean, as, as far as uh, Kiso is concerned, he's very laid back. So obviously with the late reply, he probably didn't care and got you in there. Was it really like that on set too, where everybody was just having a ball and, you know, it was more of like ad libbing as opposed to being like serious actors. So you were able to feel a little bit more comfortable. They really accommodated us. So, you know, like I said, we're not actors. You know, I, you know, the only acting I did was maybe if you suckered me, I'd act, try to draw a penalty or something. But, <laughs> but, and then kill someone. Yeah, but, you know, like I said, Jared's an unbelievable guy. Like, I I can't say enough about the guy. He loves, you know, he's a big fan of yours, Biz Nasty. You know, all you guys. And obviously, RA, he brought you on the show. So, and what I really admire about him, he's a big promoter of First Nation people as well. So if you watch Shorzy, there's a lot of Native guys on there with, you know, with all this reconciliation and shit that's going on. It's nice to 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 get those people on on TV and stuff. You know, like you had the two Nolan brothers, you had myself. You know, you had uh, the few girls on there that were First Nation background. So he's really into that. And then he used us to make. Um, he used us a lot. Like we had a lot of input on. There was things we do from on the ice or in the dressing room where we'd say, Hey man, that we'd never do that in a real dressing room, you know, even like the way we hang our skates in the stalls and all that. So we had a lot of input to make it a real hockey movie. You know, there was times where we'd have a hockey fight. He said, Oh, I like that. I like that. I'm like, fuck you. So I, I would never do that in a hockey fight. That's fake. And so we had a lot of input on making it more like a real hockey fight or a real hockey game or, you know, Believe it or not, I was one of the more skilled guys out there once in a while. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Toe dragging people. <laughs> Maxi, funny story. Um, uh, I don't know how much time we have, but uh, well, we got about two hours, buddy. Buckle okay. up. <laughs> yeah, first, first, uh, you know, the my, the first day we had to go practice, and it was just basically a bunch. It was like going to camp. Your first day at camp, and guys are going on the ice, and you know, you're all kind of, oh, I'm this guy, I'm that guy, and you know, bragging about each other and. The original fish, they had brought this young kid in from uh, Toronto or somewhere. And I think on their resumes, when guys applied for these roles, they had to say, you know, I played junior A or I played AAA midget or I played in the Western League or I played in the American League or, you know, whatever, just to say you had background. So this young kid comes out and, I mean, you could tell just the way he was getting dressed in his equipment. The kid's never played hockey in his life. 
<laughs> he gets on the ice. You know, there's guys, like, and I'm not even trying to brag about myself, but like, Jordan Nolan and, Brent, you know, all guys that have played pretty high caliber hockey. And we're out there just fucking snapping pucks around and, you know, like, you know, like the big boys. And there's this kid out there that's he's holding his stick and, you know, and the stick at the end of the knot for about oh, three no. inches above. And I remember because, I mean, like even Keith was a pretty good hockey player. You know, he's played some junior hockey when he was younger and stuff. So this kid stuck out like a sore thumb. And uh, anyways, at the end of this practice, uh, the kid got shipped home because <laughs> <laughs> we had to recruit one of the guys that was considered, uh, like, you guys probably acted more than I, what is it called? Uh, um, extra. You know, an extra. We had some, the, the fish that's on our show now was actually just supposed to be an extra. So he came in and so he, so, so some other guys, unfortune became his fortune, you know? So next thing you know, he's the new fish on the show. And I guess uh, Brandon felt bad. He says, because when they drove up, they all came on the same bus together. And that kid was just the kid that got cut was like filming everything through his whole tour. Like I'm going up to Florida and <laughs> the last one day and he got shipped home. So uh, I don't know if I should have said that publicly, but that was, no, that's, no, that's okay. He gets a shout out on the pod. Now this guy's getting to live the dream. Yeah, so, no talent whatsoever. Yeah. He, he's, he's like, I'm going to try out for a hockey show, but he didn't know how to play hockey. I mean, there, there was only one way that was going to end. I thought you were yeah. going to say that was RA, though. Yeah. He's a basketball player. <laughs> I was hoping to see RA out there, though. But uh, yeah, and then, like I said, but just going back to filming, I mean, they were so welcoming to us. You know, they knew we were a bunch of, you know, rookies in the acting industry. And and so they were really patient with us and, and uh, it went really well. So it was just like playing hockey, man. A bunch of guys that all hung out and 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 chit chat at night, and you know, drank and had fun and partied. But you know, when it came to work, we had to do a do a job, and we did it. 